What a lovely fog we have this morning. So of course I had to bring you along with me. I'm out early today because I wanted to take photos of the uh, lights at night. And I just woke up the, uh, the swans. So I'm gonna be walking for the next few hours. Uh, the fog usually sticks around for a longer time now in the winter. So I should have plenty of time this morning. I hope you have plenty of time to watch this video too because it's not going to be a short one. But I promise to, to try my best to keep you entertained. I am using right now the 50mm 1.2 lens, not only because it's uh, better for low light, but also because uh, the softness that it creates goes very well, I think, with the high contrast that these images have. So this is a manual focusing lens and I've been using this uh, uh, tool in the camera, I think it's called the uh, focus magnifier and it really helps uh, to make sure that you're focusing where you are, where you want to, because at 1.2 the depth of field can be very, very shallow, so that is very useful. I've changed really quick to my uh, Tamron lens. I needed a wider field of view for this photo here. I think it looks cool. Uh, car coming. Well, that might help. Oh, come on. You see, it is in these cases where autofocus struggles a little bit in low light. So, I don't know, something like that. Kind of want to get the reflection of the lights on the water. Something like that. I'm going to take another one without or just with a few. Um, I like this framing a little bit better. All right, another one. That should be enough. There is a lot of traffic today. I guess it it makes sense because it's a it's a Friday, it's a weekday, but it's a, when the fog is happening. I can't choose that, so it's gonna be loud for a little bit uh, while I'm in town. I will be uh, heading towards more peaceful lands later. For now I'm just trying to take advantage of the uh, street lights and the contrast of the lights with the uh, still dark environment and the fog. They're very powerful elements that can make for very good images. more swans hello don't go don't go i made an image uh, here a couple days ago and i liked it uh because i'm using a wider lens now i have the uh, tamron on the camera i'm trying just something different that is to have uh well the tree here on the left, on the very, very left of the frame, but also including that other tree on the right that is a little bit farther away, so it's less clear. I don't know if that's going to work, but it's a lot of uh, symmetry, you know. Um, I don't know if the composition is going to work because it might be uh, too tight to the sides and nothing in the middle. The problem here comes from uh, this camera, the E7R2, not having a, 
uh, one by one mode so I can't uh, really see what the image is going to look like afterwards I use this uh, the grid so I can have an idea of what is going on the frame and what's not I have to crop this in post later but uh, in situations like this it's very hard to to be aware of how how tight the image is going to be you know because I have this uh, this uh, space on the left and this one on the right it might feel like the image can breathe a little bit but once I crop it this composition might be too tight the trees might be too close to the edge and there might be not enough space uh, I don't know that's one of the disadvantages of having to shoot this way but it is what it is It is a lovely morning, but it is so cold, especially when I stop for a second to take a, a photo, an image. Uh, if I stop walking, I get very, very cold really quick. I think uh, this is calling for a wider shot here than 28 so I'm gonna get my wide angle lens all right let's see now yeah much better I know that I want to point down for sure to show more of the path as a leading leading path to the building I guess all right so I'm gonna go like this trying to show the whole building in the frame pointing down a little bit raising the camera so a little bit higher that could work but I still want to capture one of these bushes I think they are very good contrast to the whole scene I think this could look cool I'm paying more attention now to the edges of the frame uh, I'm trying to crop those two elements of the building on the left and the right I don't know what the, what they are called it's let's call them towers but uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, crop them so you don't see the the edges uh, and just trying to place the uh, bush there in the middle I think that could work yeah I think I like it we'll see this is a pretty beautiful place and it looks pretty cool in the fog to the eye because uh, making photos here you need something uh, to contrast that building against if I take a photo here well, it looks just like a regular photo, a regular day. The fog doesn't do anything uh, for the uh, building. It just makes the whole image less clear. But it, it is when you contrast something in front of that building, a strong subject or something that you can have closer to you, that you can show the, uh, the fog uh, better and the effects of the uh, fog. this is for my little side project it's not going to be a square image uh, there you go I like it this is like a playground for kids I guess to learn the uh, 
signs and the rules on the road. So this is like a tiny, tiny road with uh, a lot of signs even a roundabout. What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to take the fence in the foreground, um, placing this stick right here to the right of the uh, the tree on the right of the frame to uh, give it give the image some balance. So I want the tree on the top left. I want that stick on the bottom right. So it's, uh, it feels like a more balanced image. The uh, challenges. Uh, that I have here, the difficulties to achieve that is the uh, that house there in the background that you might not be able to see very well now on the screen, but it is there. And it's, it is going to show up in the image unless I do something about it. So I'm trying to do as much as I can now uh, by framing this image in a way that that house well, doesn't take a lot of space in the frame but without compromising the composition what i want to show with this image what i want to say i want to show that fence like it's almost like a fenced tree you know but it's in an empty big space i think it's a very good contrast so i'm getting closer to the tree because it's a beautiful tree but uh, i think i like the image with the fence uh, in the foreground more I think it's more interesting. I said this many times, but uh, images of just something, an object or a, or a tree or something like this in a empty white frame can be very beautiful, but also very boring. Okay, I'm gonna switch now. All right, wide angle. So this should help uh, in the sense that we can get closer to the tree. Uh, that is going to make it darker, that is going to make it stand out more. It is nicer here because I can include some of those other trees in the background that, that should give this image a little bit of depth, depth that was lacking when it was just a mostly white background. That's kind of cool. There is a power line there. And uh, I'm trying to capture <coughs> sorry, this fence here. Um, so the power lines are going, I don't know if you can see them because it's pretty bright, but they're going uh, down this way, diagonally a little bit. And the fence is going uh, slightly up. So that is not going to happen in the frame, but it gives the impression that they are going to converge at some point, you know? So I was thinking about taking a photo from high up there. That might work, but there's another fence here uh, in front of me that is uh, making that photo very hard. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I thought about doing at least, was to actually embrace it and have three different lines now. It might be a little bit complicated, but I have the power lines going in this direction, have this fence, go fence this going in this direction, and this one going in this direction. So they are like three diagonal lines going in different directions, and that might make for a, a little bit more complicated image than I usually do, I guess, but uh, it could be interesting. I'm just trying to find the right balance between all the lines 
in this image and also the uh, sticks on the fan side and trying to, to put the power line in between two of them but of course the background sometimes doesn't cooperate anyway I think this could be uh, interesting slightly different I guess we'll see it is really foggy right now it's it's still very very cold I uh, my feet are frozen my toes I can't feel them because you know to, to make some of the images I get on the grass and it's it's wet and once you get wet in cold weather uh, everything becomes a little bit more miserable but it is beautiful here um, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> where I am I mean I'm not lost I know that I can always retrace uh, my steps back but it is so beautiful and so peaceful though I, I absolutely love it here All right, so this is going to be a little bit of a more saddle image. I uh, hope you can see the power line there. I want it going across the frame and ending on the top right while it's still showing some of the road. Let's see, something like that. I'm splitting the frame equally because I want to show the road too so half of the frame the bottom half of the frame is the road and the top half of the frame is that uh, power line this is all about the uh, mystery that the fog creates uh, in these landscapes you see this is another good one um, so in this case I I'm showing a little bit more of the road so close but so far there is a beautiful tree there in the middle of this field and there is a um, well there too those could be very cool images both of them but they are too far away in this field it's full of dirt and probably fertilizer uh, i don't really want to get that stuff on my boots so it's a shame but i have to pass on this trip now this tree is closer so this image might work actually i like it uh, i'm playing with that that tree and the the ones in the background and also the uh, the field has been has been worked on you know uh, for uh, they're gonna plant something here i guess but my point is there are uh, some lines on the field that point to the trees which makes the image even better all right i think i'm gonna try to get in that field uh, here i guess it is the same field just from the other side but these trees are much closer so i don't have to walk on this dirt as much it's not as bad as I thought, so we'll see. Just wanted to get close to these trees. That uh, was a composition with the three trees, and now I want to take one with this, just two, and there is another smaller one in the background. I think this is a lovely scene here. The background doesn't work as well. next to the road so it's not as peaceful nice I'm happy with that one that's uh, I think a beautiful composition beautiful trees here in this random field pretty cool and my boots seem to be doing just fine so that was great I like this one. I like placing this uh, hay here in the foreground while having the others uh, in the background. It's all about the relationship, creating relationships between the elements in the image. I think that having that one in the foreground, the other, the other ones in the background, 
works much better than just, for example, having something like this. It's, uh, in my opinion, not as interesting uh, as an image. These cows have very long horns. I am back in town. I'm back where the, this day started, uh, but that was uh, three and a half hours ago. So even though it's still pretty foggy and pretty beautiful out here, I think I'm gonna call it a morning. It's uh, been enough, I'm getting tired. So I'm gonna say goodbye now. This is all for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I really had a great time this morning out here. Thank you so much for watching again.